Minimally invasive lumbar decompression is a, a new procedure that's been around now for about three years. There have been about 10,000 cases performed in the U.S. But the idea behind minimally invasive lumbar decompression, or MILD, is it is a percutaneous, ultra-minimally ultra invasive way to treat spinal stenosis. Spinal stenosis is uh, a disease where as the spine settles over time and you lose height, the, the, the diameter of the canal that houses the nerves inside the go to the legs gets tighter and tighter and starts to compress those nerves. And so uh, previously, the, really, the only things we had were oral medicines like Tylenol and, and drugs, and then epidurals, which seemed to help some, and then we jump all the way to a big surgery called a laminectomy. And uh, the trouble is, is that laminectomies, while sometimes very, very effective, uh, do have surgical risk. And it's, uh, it's about 26% of the time there's a, there's a complication, whether it be a dural tear or a hematoma or an infection. And so there, uh, there was a place between this, uh, the epidural and the, uh, the big surgery for some type of minimally invasive approach. And so that's where MILD was essentially born. The idea is to, to use a small needle, it's only about uh, uh, five millimeters wide, and you numb up the skin, you can do it outpatient, and you uh, put a little needle in, and then through the needle you have an instrument that goes in and it just trims away the part of the ligament that's been pressing on those nerves and frees up that compression. And so instead of making these big incisions where you cut the bone out and you take all the, the ligaments and the muscles and everything out, you don't do any of that with a mild. Instead, what you do is you just make a small incision, you go in with a little needle and you trim away the ligament that's pressing on, uh, on the spinal contents, the nerve roots and the, the spinal cord. And so very easily you can, uh, you can perform this procedure and patients walk out of the procedure room. They go home, go out to dinner on the way home, whereas with a, a laminectomy it's a three to four day hospital course and a long rehab process afterwards. Like I said, severe stenosis, there's still a need for surgery. It also doesn't work in everybody, just like everything doesn't work in everybody, so you have to be highly selective about the right kind of patient. But if you pick very, very well, then uh, you have a high chance of having good success. The real criteria for knowing whether this is going to work for you is A, having a diagnosis of spinal stenosis. So you've got to have an MRI that shows that there's pinching of those nerves uh, from the ligament in back of the spine. Secondarily, you also have to make sure, and this is somewhat uh, difficult to know without having a doctor look at your MRI, but make sure that the holes where the nerves come out, that is not a component of the pinching of the nerve. And then the biggest symptom is leg pain with walking. If you have leg pain with walking and tiredness of the legs with walking, it's essentially relieved by sitting. Those are the cardinal symptoms of, of uh, spinal stenosis. So if you have that, then you, uh, in those three components, then you have a very high likelihood of getting relief from the mild procedure. Some people sedate for this procedure. I found that you really don't even need sedation with appropriate just numbing of the skin. Uh, most people I've passed 20 cases I've done, people have been awake and talking to me through the whole, whole procedure. Some patients have uh, gone on and needed surgery afterwards and this hasn't worked completely for them. But I think for the, for the patient who's gambling with uh, big surgery or for the patient who really can't have a big surgery, such as someone who's got a heart trouble or a lung trouble or something like that, then this is a very reasonable uh, stopgap measure. We're not going to put neurosurgeons out of business, but um, I think this is a great adjunct to, uh, to what they, they provide for us.